If you've been watching my channel for a while, you guys know that I'm a little bit of a true crime junkie, but I have not done a true crime video of any sort in quite a while. I thought though that this was the time to do it because a huge case that I have been following for a very long time has been solved and I just can't stop thinking about it. So I wanna talk about it. So if you guys have read A Walk in the Woods, then you probably have heard of this case as well. In May of 1996, two women, Lolly Winans and Julie Williams, who were in the, uh, a couple in their 20s, were found brutally murdered in Shenandoah National Park, not far off from the Appalachian Trail near Skyland Lodge. I've been paying attention to this case for a very long time because as many of you know, I lived in Washington DC for several years. I used to go down to Shenandoah National Park all the time. And even though this happened in 1996, I, when I was in DC, I knew a lot of people from Virginia and every now and again, this conversation would come up about these women who were murdered in the park and it was never solved. And for me personally, I just, I thought about them a lot because I was going down to Shenandoah National Park a lot. I had a lot in common with them. They were into the outdoors and outdoor education. They'd gone backpacking in the park. And being that I knew a lot of people who were from Virginia when I was in DC, you'd hear rumors about it. And one of the rumors that I would hear is that, oh, it was probably a park worker or a park ranger. Like that was one of the rumors while I was there. And obviously as a woman who likes to hike solo, that would freak me out. But thank goodness that didn't end up being the case that someone in a position of authority in the park didn't end up being this horrible person. The FBI just announced last week that after 28 years, the murders have been solved and they were done by a serial rapist from Ohio named Walter Leo Jackson. This guy was a criminal with a huge rap sheet, including charges for kidnapping, assault, and rape. And he painted houses for a living in Ohio. I'm gonna go into the case a little bit and let you know the circumstances of what happened. But if you wanna know more specifics about the case, I read an amazing book about it a couple of years ago that I would highly recommend. It came out in 2022 and it's called Trout, One Woman's Quest to solve the Shenandoah murders by Catherine Miles. And I am sure, so this book, it's amazing. It, it dives deep into the investigation and everything that happened with the case. And I'm sure that this book got renewed interest in the case. And I'm sure it's one of the reasons that the case was finally solved. So I highly recommend that book. I'll link it down in the show notes, but let's talk about the murders and what happened. Julie Williams was a 24-year-old woman from St. Cloud, Minnesota. She loved nature and she studied geology in school. And Lolly Winans was her 26-year-old partner. She also loved the outdoors and nature and she was studying to be a guide. Both women were experienced hikers and campers. And on May 19th, 1996, they began a camping trip in Shenandoah National Park in Virginia. They were supposed to be home from the trip on May 28th, but they never made it. Their family shortly after reported them missing. After about a day of searching, the women's bodies were found at their campsite by a creek just off the Appalachian Trail within a half mile of Skyland Lodge. And if you've ever been to Skyland Lodge, then you know there are a lot of people around in the area. I imagine it was the same in 1996. Obviously, I'm not sure what it was like back then, but now it has a restaurant and a bar and a coffee shop and a nice little lounge and there, there are cabins that you can rent and places you can stay in really nice views where you can stop and have a snack. I stopped there on my Appalachian Trail through hike. I was back there just recently actually when I was on my trip to do heading down south to do the Virginia Triple Crown and on my way to trail days. So it, it's a popular tourist visitor spot. And it also has horse stables right there. And so it, it's just sort of crazy that they could be so close within a half mile to all of these other people and safety. And this happened to them. Trigger warning, they were found bound, gagged with their throats slit. And there's evidence that they were both sexually assaulted before their deaths. There was a lot of speculation at the time that this might have been a hate crime because the women were a couple, but that was never confirmed. Several men were suspected of committing these heinous crimes. 
around this time, Richard Avonit, a serial killer, was killing young women around the area around the same time back in 1996. The Colonial Parkway murders, a series of murders occurring in Virginia in the 1980s that were never solved at this point. People were wondering if there was a link with those. The Colonial Parkway murders, by the way, were also solved this in January of this year. And a man named Daryl Rice was also suspected of the murders because he was caught attacking a woman in the park about a year later. If you read the book Trailed, then you'll probably share my opinion that the FBI and all of the investigators really fumbled this investigation and it probably could have been solved a long time ago. Not that that would bring the women back, but I, I hope this at least gives some closure to the families. The FBI eventually, as in last week, announced that Walter Leo Jackson Sr. had committed the murders and they linked him to the crimes via DNA evidence that was left behind on the duct tape that was used to tape up the girls to bound them. He died in prison in 2018, so he will never be brought to justice, but I hope that his death does give some comfort to people out there. I know that I, I am happy that it has finally been solved and that this horrible, horrible person is no longer on this earth. Stay safe out there. I personally consider the Appalachian Trail to be a a very safe place to be most of the time though there are bad people everywhere be aware of your surroundings and especially you women out there remember that you do not have to engage in conversation with people that make you uncomfortable you do not have to be polite get out of a situation if you're feeling uncomfortable or unsafe trust your instincts and please don't let this discourage you from going out backpacking and camping and hiking out into nature again there are bad people everywhere, bad things happen everywhere, but for the most part, the wilderness is a pretty darn safe place to be, in my opinion. At least if you're doing things in a safe manner and not taking unnecessary risks. Rest in peace, Lolly and Julie. Back to my regularly scheduled hiking content next week. And if you like hiking, backpacking, outdoors and traveling, make sure you subscribe to my channel. I only sprinkle in true crime every now and again, and it's always related to the outdoors. Thanks for being here, even though this was kind of a sad one, but 